Um, so when you write down your skill set, this, this is the challenge I'm going to give to you, and this is what my talk is about. You need to write down your skill set. And when you do write your skill, match it to the standards of what a professional bookkeeper skill set should be. And I will PDF that to you. Um, and then you can make an informed decision about whether you will upskill or whether you will work within your skill set. Now, that's okay. And that's what I do. I just say, I'll only do this and I'll only do that. I can't do that. I can't do NYB inventory because I still haven't learnt. So I have to pass that work on to somebody else. And thank goodness that Debbie Law is around and Joe Threlfo and all those people who are fantastic because I refer all my clients to them. So if all the people who don't know how to bookkeeper go through this exercise, there will be less issues facing our profession today. Too many bookkeepers work outside their skill set and cause so much trouble for the small business community that it tarnishes everybody. And is that a fair statement? Yeah, I think that's true. So when I first started bookkeeping, um, I was a manual learner. I learned everything through manual ledgers and understood the whole concept of debits and credits through a manual side. So, and I'm in the, I'm in the 80s girl, so, so computers are more of a necessity as a thrill, as what most people, teenagers say. It's a real thrill to know all this technology, but for me it's not. It's a real burden and I have to keep learning all the time for that. And considering that most bookkeepers are women over the age of 40, um, we all, I think, have this sort of struggle with that. Well, maybe you are technophobe, but I'm not. <laughs> um, so, uh, blah, blah, blah. okay. So I really, it was really good balance sheets, and you know, I did the triplicate carbon balance sheets. I actually understood them. I was trained by an accountant, um, Jerry Gamble, all those years ago, and so I really had a great understanding of accounting. But I had no idea about MYB or, or, or whatever, and that's where I made my mistakes because. Um, I thought I was doing one thing in NYB and I didn't, which is a problem with accountants these days, may I say, Craig, is that they're fantastic. You may say. Yeah, thank you. They're fantastic accountants, but they don't really know NYB or QuickBooks, so they make such horrendous mistakes and errors in NYB. And they go, why did you do that? And they go, well, I just thought that was right. So they have the same struggles in, you know, in different ways. So what I did, though, was I developed my criteria. Out of all my learnings and all my problems, I developed a criteria which I will stick through with, with Synergy. And for 10 years, I've actually stayed with this. Um, so when I was good experience. Um, so, for example, when I look at a client, I look at my skill set, and this is what I do. I provide the following. I only do four criteria. I do restaurants. I do trades, only if they're a sole trader. Only if they're a sole trader, I'll do trades. I do consultants and I do medical practitioners. And that's where I excel in because I have a lot of me me medical practitioners and I understand what they need and so I'm very good at that. But that's all I'll do. I won't take on any other industry because I can't, I don't have the capacity for it. I don't have the brain capacity for it. Um, if I had a lot of staff, then fair enough, but I don't. It's just me. The only software I'll use is MYB because I will not go to training sessions and I won't go to QuickBooks training sessions because that's just me, I'm lazy. So I only have to stay with MYB. So if a client wants QuickBooks, I can't do it, I'm limited. So therefore I have you guys to pass it on, you see? So um, that's my skill set. My bookkeeping duties, when I look at them, I do trade debtors, which is the sales and receding, trade creditors, purchases and payments, reconciliation of bank and credit accounts, I do payroll, I do best preparation and financial statement reporting, I maintain balance sheet items in agreement with the accountant. Now, this is one decision I've made that I work very closely with all my accountants and, and I only do the journal entries. I don't try and pretend I'm an accountant and work out all the, you know, depreciation and stuff like that. One, because I'm lazy. Two, because I don't really think that I have the knowledge. I think I do, though, but I really don't believe in myself as much to do that. So I do rely heavily on my accountants to, to work with that. I do yearly balance reconciliations, and the one thing that I do excel at and where I lose a lot of clients is because I, I value the source document. And it's very important because Ross Birrell, the Australian Taxation Office guy who worked with us when we first originally started Uniting Bookkeepers, he said to me, Sue, you do realise that bookkeepers, we love bookkeepers at the Australian Taxation Office. We want to find them, bring them into the fold, because you are our eyes and our ears. I went, oh, that's very exciting. <laughs> oh, you know, because accountants, they take their um, MYB files and they sign off with things saying, thank you very much for the information. They do the tax return, the financials based on the information, disclaimer, send it away. 
they don't necessarily go into their homes and get the boxes and the receipts and the ironing board and find out the... Well, I do that. It's a bit much, but... <laughs> I the receipts because they're all crunkled up and you want to be able to see what the actual GST component is. Or the tax invoice. I mean, who... I mean, checking the tax invoice, that there is a tax invoice, I mean, an ABN number. Um, if it looks a bit dodgy, you know, ringing the, ringing the supplier saying, look, do you have an ABN number? I mean, these are, this is our job. This is our job. This is what I believe my job is anyway as a bookkeeper. Um, and of course there are things like receipts under 8250, you don't have to worry about it, but our job is to make them compliant. So that was, I incorporated that, and if my client did not want that, then it was bye-bye to them. You know? And I may have lost some money from that, but my um, reputation is very important to me. And if I, if I come back and say, oh, dodgy, it's dodgy, you know? Did you, did you not check that it was GST component? Or, then I would feel really bad. So that was one thing that I was really a stickler for. So. But that's my skill set. That's my client skill set as well, and I marry the two together, and it's been really successful over 10 years. Um, my challenge is now I have, I have 15 unit, I've done 15 units through RPL with Uniting doing my Diploma of Accounting. I failed two, and now I'm going through Cengage doing my financial reporting entity, which is fabulous. And um, Something else, but I can't remember. I'm so exciting, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm actually, so by June next year, I'm hoping to get my Diploma of Accounting. And it's been really hard, but I think it's important to do that, keep struggling to move towards that, you know. And I've been challenged tonight by Fiona to, to become an MYB Rita, uh, certified, consultant. certified Consultant because of the parties. <laughs> <laughs> Not because of the, you know, the, of the information that you'd get or because of all the, the, the strong... Parties. You see, that's fabulous. Okay, so I just wanted to, that's basically what I wanted to share with you tonight about the product. It's so very important that you know what your product is, what you're selling is, is good, and, it's, and, and, and it, don't just put yourself a bookkeeper and go, just say, this is the sort of bookkeeper I am. I am this type of a bookkeeper. There you are. Thank you very much. Um, pricing. Um, is very rare. I'll share with you my pricing so that you'll know where I've come from. I started at $25 an hour many, many years ago. I slowly crept up to 30 and then I went to 35 And I thought, oh my goodness, it's so high. And then when I started United Bookkeepers, I met so many wonderful women and they were going, $35 an hour? What? You should be like 40 or 45 50 55 Some people are 60 $70 an hour. And I know it does depend on your experience and your skill set and your qualifications. But I mean, that's where you guys have to work that out. I mean, if you, if you do have all those things, then you really do deserve it because, you know, you're all magnificent, you're all fabulous, and we are needed. I've told you the ATO have already told that. Mm -hmm. We are so needed in the community. If you knew how many accountants were retiring over the next 10 years, you'd be staggered. There's a big hole being left, and we have to fill that. So um, I would just like to conclude my little presentation before the next speaker by saying this. I'd like to encourage you to begin the process of acknowledging your skill set and actively pursue avenues that will, that will get you ready for the new tax regime. Your product is you. You must ensure your product is cut and assembled ready for distribution when the doors open in 2010. You like that? <laughs> I think it was great. In other words, <laughs> the, the Tax Services Act and its new requirements for bookkeepers is the benchmark you must be prepared for. Our members have already received their copy of the Tax Agent Services Act, but there is a copy downloadable from the web. It's a fabulous reading. It's about 7 million pages long. <laughs> but you can actually get a few things out of this, so please I'll read it. In regards to pricing, I'd like to encourage you to talk to your peers about their level of expertise and qualifications. And if you're brave, ask how much, they, how much their hourly rates are. Review our website and check out the standards that we have researched and compare to your own rates. And remember to never sell yourself short. You are fabulous and we are very much needed in this community and remember that. Thank you.